a commencé le tour, ça va se dérouler en anglais. Good afternoon, thank you for being with us around the work of a multi-practice artist and curator, <coughs> Rivoli, along with art critics Marmande Garances and myself, Agnès Yolo, curator and writer. Um, so River, you were born in 1984 in Taipei. <coughs> you are an artist and curator working across the fields of performatic, performatic and visual arts. Your work includes site-specific performance, live art, theatre, dance and installation. You take cultural studies as a point of departure, the everyday and ritualistic of specific cultural context. <laughs> the relationship between body and the spatial-temporal, the bodily forms in between dance and performance are centrally concerned in your work as an artist and as a curator. Your performance work has been presented at festivals and exhibitions in Europe and Asia. Your curatorial projects have been presented by the Taipei Perform Performing Arts Center Taipei Fine Arts Museum, National Theatre of Taiwan, and so on. You currently live and work in Paris after you did a residency at City des Arts last year. Smaranda says, you are an independent art critic and writer. You write, amongst others, for supports such as Inferno Magazine and Abra Le Corps. You collaborate as a dramaturgist with choreographers. You live and work in Paris. So this talk is entitled The Body of Contemporary Art. As evoking a series of work we will talk about, as well as exploring issues for the body in the international art scene today, including the institution and the market. Addressing performance and performativity in regards with your work as an artist, combining influences from visual arts, theater, dance, also as a curator, questions can arise. How do you deal with the various issues of performative, performative practices in the exhibition making or when commissioned from an institution, as well as when it comes to a fair context like today? We had the chance to see um, earlier a piece you created after Tino Segal, after his piece entitled 2010. Um, how about reenactment or reflection or replay? Um, this specific piece worked as a series of, um, or as a collage of uh, pieces while mixing influences between the East and the West between the tradition and modernity, between the local and the global. How about the relationship between watching and being watched? How could performance become a kind of politics when politics become a form of performance? And eventually, as a curator, you also happen to invite in Asia French choreographers such as Boris Charmat and Xavier Leroy. <coughs> Um, for uh, upcoming projects in Taiwan, and so you tell us more about this side of your work as well. Now, I would let you, Smaranda, uh, start the conversation. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in the beginning, I would like to just say a few words also about this work we've seen. Oh. Okay. So, um, there are some um, obvious references and uh, assumed references to works of Tino Segal and to works of Tino Segal and Agnes just told, um, especially Untitled 2001. Uh, there, there are references also to Xavier Barlet's perspective and the title of the piece is uh, uh, a reference to Boris Shamatov's uh, 20, 
dancers, for him, for the dancers from the 20th century. You, you entitle your piece 20 minutes for the, the 20th century, but Asian. So, in between this kind of um, family of works, um, how, how do you appropriate this image and how do you inject your Maybe the question is what interested you the most in this kind of approach of dance and art, performance art, and uh, in the approach of history. And regarding to a to, uh, whole region, I don't know, maybe we talk a little bit about these pieces regarding to yours. And then <laughs> well, um, thank you for um, coming to see the performance, and thank you, Anias, and this is my life. Um, so, um, firstly, actually, I'd like to describe a little bit about uh, the original piece of Tino Segar's work. Well, it was actually, it's a coincidence that Tino Segar is doing solo exhibition at Hale Tokyo. Well, actually, the piece of uh, um, the piece of Tino Sega originally was called 20 Minutes for the 20th Century. But at that time, it was created in 2000, the year of 2000, before Tino Sega entered Museum Sophia. At that time, he was, dance, he was a dance maker working in Belgium, mostly with Alain Planté, Planté, the, the choreographer. So it was actually a, a solo piece. It's a demonstration of the body and the dance history of the last century. But so in that piece, there was a totally naked performer dancing the many different sequences from the selected twenties, a uh, twenty choreographers' movement like Pina Pausch, like. George Balakin, like uh, yeah, like Matthew Graham, uh, and Xavier Le Roy, and Jo Hong Bell in the last century, in the late um, yeah, the late nineties, yeah. So that was for me when I saw the work. Um, I found it was very interesting to see this idea to address how we pursue the history of the dance and of course the history of the body. But very quickly I found it's totally European driven perspective. Of course. And I said this is not criticizing this American influence. Yeah, but I think I, I said this because I'm Asian. But so I very quickly I'm I'm aware of the cultural difference. Then I started to look back so, if I want to talk about this kind of topic, the idea of how we address or how we describe the, the history of body and dance in some you know, theater contest or in the fine art contest in Asia, how can we talk about that? So I started to think about the, the idea of the post-colonization um, and it's quite actually, uh, actually necessary for me at least, or I say we Asian people to consider. And the difficulty is actually Asia is so complicated. Yeah. There are so yeah. many cultural traditions yeah. and yeah. so many historical uh, yes. contingencies. Yes. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's interesting to remind that in uh in uh Nosegad and in Orisha Matos pieces <coughs> Uh, uh, a stress on a kind of subjective approach mm -hmm. because the, the question arises also which kind of history, which kind of narrative, there are dominant narratives yes. and uh, then there are, uh, there are other, uh, other paths to imagine. Mm -hmm. So Shamat was talking about excavation, about uh, subjective excavation about archaeology. So, um, how do you... Yeah.
Yeah, how do I, how do I sort of this, um, make this connection and imagination? In example? Yeah, yeah, generally, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, so for me, the, the, the following question um, is about to study the context. And I very, because, um, because it's at the same time, I spend some time in Europe doing my live art practices. So it's more related to the fine art context. But then I, because uh, it's actually, um, it's all around the practice of body or the artist's body or how we treat body as a medium itself. So I look at dance practice from some choreographers and, and I found there has been a trend of archiving dance or how we talk about the, 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 um, the live um, notation, for example, or the live documentation of performance in terms of the dance book. Um, so in Asia, I, I found, okay, if we want to talk about the, the body movement or the dance movement and how, uh, related to the political or social context, then we need to re-examine in the Asian context that what does modernity or what does modern, the term, mean to us? And so the truth, in fact, the fact is uh, the, the idea of modernity or the idea of becoming a modern society is a pretty, uh, is a extremely political progress because modernity is the term coming from the West and becoming a, ma ma a modern society is become, is become to be westernized so in this way, when we say modern dance, when we say contemporary dance, uh, when we say the traditional dance, when we define something modern, which means we want to separate, and want, we, want to, we want to make the horizon to separate the, what the traditional and what the modern is. And modern is representing um, the West, and the traditional representing you know, the ancient time or, or the idea of uh, disconnected with the progress. Yeah. So the idea of, you know, yeah, yeah, that's totally Western. So it becomes very interesting for, for me when I, when I spend some time to do research in Japan, in Indonesia, in Singapore, in um, and I found some. I, I, I did, uh, I've done some interview with some dancer and choreographer, even from Laos. I mean, some countries from South Asia and Korea, Japan, and I have friends from Hong Kong, from China, and all the resource is really referring uh, referring to a fact where we cannot easily describe what. Asia is and what Asian body is because it's just totally different in different country. So it's not really like a big picture that we can project it on in Europe or in America that we find uh, easily that there is a stream and there is a trend and there is a different faces in some history, uh, is historical um, definition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe if we get to your work, you, you choose to start with uh, radio school exercises? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you know this idea like, you know, the radio exercise is like doing uh, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And it's really, um, I don't know if you, you can imagine that, but this kind of um, radio exercise was imported to Taiwan, for example, to Taiwan from Japanese colonization in like last century in the fifties uh, or sixties when they when Japanese uh, people um, build up the um, education system that every student you have to be embodied by this radio exercise in the morning you before you take all your class in a long day you need to do that and when I look at it, the, the history actually why Japan has this radio exercise is actually imported by America. Yeah. 
So you know, in this way, the cultural context is really related. And I and I just remember um, Smalanda say in Russia as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really for me. It's, so for me, it was um, it could be a very starting point for this performance to um, to show the the symbol of how a body um, how a body conduct itself. Yeah. And how the body stands for the political, the ideological. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So if you see the if you saw the performance, then you can see after the radio exercise, the dancer just become a ballerina. And that's also the idea when we talk about dance, when we talk about modern dance in Asia, the first image that we can picture is ballet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different um, idea because I know in if I am right, I mean in, in West, I mean European and American context, um, the idea of modern dance is trying to resist uh, ballet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in Asia, it's like we consider ballet is modern. Yeah. And here, this word uh, you just said, resistance. Do you consider your work as a um, using this uh, idea of the body as a tool for resistance? A little bit, a little bit. Uh, but my intention was not to very cl clearly uh, demonstrate the idea because I I really cautiously consider it's blurry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for example, um, the reason that I didn't show the specific sequence from specific choreographer in the piece is because it's not about the sequence and it's not about the specific um, choreographer's work. It's more about the methodology. It's more about the embody. So, so I so that's also the way that I try to bring some idea of resistance or demonstration, but I didn't do in a very extreme way. I just, um, you know, propose the dancer to show, can, you, can, can we do some method ground technique? Can we do some Merce Cunningham technique? But I, did, I, I don't say, can we do some, a specific piece of a specific choreographer? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what's so interesting, what you, you've said about the, the idea of modernity uh, constructed in uh, opposite to uh, traditional. But in your uh, piece, you, you bring also some traditional techniques, you bring also some uh, popular culture. So how this patchwork is going on? And yeah, uh, actually, I don't know if you know, there's a dance movement called Pala Pala. Maybe you don't know, right? Okay. Pala Pala is very, was very, has become very trendy in late 80s to 90s. Pala Pala is a basically a movement. I'm not a dancer, sorry. <laughs> the movement where the dancer was addressing like this and doing something like this, this is called Pala Pala dance. And Pala Pala dance is related to the disco culture from America. And that was in, uh, imported to China, Hong Kong, I mean, even Southeast Asia, Taiwan, Japan, Korea. And it was very interesting. Uh, if you look the the, the uh, history, and you can find, you can find that um, in India, in India they have Bollywood, right? And actually, the original shape of this kind of disco and pala pala dance is the original uh, point of Bollywood dance movement. So, yeah, so that's why I also select this movement in in, in this work. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what about also yoga and some traditional? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese. Yeah, I, I put some Chinese books and um, Tai Chi and yoga. And because for me, uh, it's the way to blur the boundary of the definite of how we define that. Yeah, but I want to also want to you know extend a little bit more about from the dance movement and to the to the body's uh, demonstration. So, and also for example, the reason that I addressed uh, yoga movement and Tai 
Chi, Tai Tai Chi, Tai Chi movement. It's actually it's related it's it's actually related and mixed with mother ground technique. It comes from another form in Asia, for example. So you see that that you saw the dancer was dancing mother ground movement, and then she turned to Tai Chi, and afterwards she. Made a combination of muscle ground technique and tai chi movement, doing another sequence. So it's it's the way that how this kind of culture, different culture conference, a、uh, digital cu a cultural influence into the Asia contest, and and we can imagine nowadays. <laughs> Uh, there is also some foggy、uh, maybe or some dance hall. A little bit dance hall, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Because I, I I wanted to、um, capture some、um, some dance contest related to common people. I wouldn't say it's specifically pop culture, but for common people, because the idea is coming from the Chinese folk. If we Look back the history of Chinese folk that we can find there. There are two different dimensions of Chinese folk. One is dancing in the palais, the king like Louis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the king likes you know to see beautiful girl or you know to dance. And there's a folk dance in in China in Chinese history in the palais. And another form is for the common people. And all day when we.、Um, Talk about the Chinese ball is now more blurry and、uh, mixed. And、uh, maybe can you tell us a little bit about the logic also of、uh, post-colonial or、uh, of、uh, cultural influences and、uh, and of economics also because.、Uh, It's,、uh, it's dynamics between traditional,、mm -hmm. uh, contemporary,、mm -hmm. higher art.、Mm -hmm. oh. Well, I can give a very stereotype example,、mm -hmm. like between China and Taiwan. You know, you know, every time it's been very interesting that people ask Taiwanese, "How do you define you are Taiwanese?、Yeah. You are Xinhua. You are just Chinese." But you know, yes, we are like we、well, like we are from basically maybe we are the same hand race, but it's just different. And so even though we share the same Chinese culture, but the identity of the the personal or the social and cultural identity of being Chinese and being Taiwanese is just totally different. And then if we go further, there is a, a little bit.、Uh, there is also a very Complicated case that Singaporean. When you ask Singaporean, how do you define you are Singaporean? What makes you Singaporean? Wow, it's really complicated as well. If we look back the the history before the independence of Singapore, it was the territory was part of Malaysia, and Malaysia is also you know、um, not only Malay and、uh, Indonesia. Nizia, India influence, but also it was colonized by British. So, in a way that the, in the different Asian country that we can, we always can find a very、um, complicated、um, context. And if we talk about, okay, for example, there's another interesting、um, uh, identity issue between China and Hong Kong. You know, like before 1997. Hong Kong, they say Hong Kong Ki, Hong Kong, not Hong Konger, but Hong Kong Ki, Hong Kong people's identity, and and Hong Kong's identity is just Hong Kong, and maybe Hong Kong's identity is more Western because it's related to the UK, but after the uh, 1997, now when we talk about Hong Kong, it's more blurry. Some Hong Kong people. Still in,、uh, insist they are Hong Kong key, but some are just say yeah we are Chinese because officially we are part of China. And also another、uh, interesting example is like Taiwan, because Taiwan has been、uh, colonized by Japan, and before and,、uh, and after Japan was China, and then before China was like many years ago.、Uh, 
name Holland. Holland. Yeah, Holland. And the Formosa also. Yeah, like. yeah. So, so all kinds of um, elements of this kind of uh, colonial um, influence has become really part of our body. Yeah. So that, that's why uh, that's also a very interesting research that I've done, and I want to bring into this piece about the post-colonization situation. River, if I can ask, if I can bring you to um, uh, another piece you've done, speaking about territories and space, I'm thinking of the, um, the piece you did for Manifesto. You did? Um, kiss, you did? Kiss it better. Kiss it better. Ah, okay. um, where you explicitly address uh, anthropological space or an anthropological use of space. Um, can you tell us more on your relationship with distance, space, or public, private, inside, outside? Um, well, there's a very um, fascinating practice for me is to do something in between. So, um, as Anya mentioned, Anya's mentioned, um, the, there's can you um, describe the piece maybe? Yeah, okay. First of all. Um, the, 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 the key, uh, no, not the key. The, ti the title of this work is called Case Better. It's an uh, English um, phrase. And uh, it, it means that uh, when you are like you are a child and when you get hurt, get hurt and your mother just, oh, don't worry, you'll be better. I'll kiss you, kiss it better, I'll kiss it better. And then, uh, so I found it's very, um, interesting idea that kiss in the the English language uh, seems to be some meaning related to end up something and to open up something new or something disconnected and uh, so and so firstly I, I found kiss could be an interesting idea to make a performance and secondly I I'm quite interested in the encounter with the audience, yeah. And I very, um, I'm, I'm always thinking about how I can collaborate, collaborate with the audience members without um, being theatrical. Or you know, sometimes when we see some performance, I'm always the one of the audience that is so afraid of if the actors or the performers try to interact with me. I always feel. No, it's embarrassing. Yeah, but I just wanted to try. I just wanted to try if I can uh, address this idea and I can do some interaction with people. So the the kiss better the performance is um, each time it has been it has been done in very uh, different forms. But one form is one to one performance, but operated in a small group of people. So. I approach a, a, a person and I ask the person question, which part of your body has been recently hurting, uncomfortable, or injured, emotionally or physically? Then the question needs to be answered and the, 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 the audience member needs to think about if he or she wants to answer emotional dimension or physical dimension. So in this way, I've been kissing so many different kinds of part of body of the audience. Yeah, and even us. <laughs> yeah, and so it, and, and that's the way to reveal the personal history or the personal secret in a small group of the public. But at the same time, it's it's become a situation that in between the private and the public, between me and one person, but also between us and some other people in this small group. It's something about healing each other? Yeah, it's, it's the idea of talking about the relationship between emotional and physical pain, and some physical and a relationship between So it's hurting, but actually, from from the appearance, you cannot see any wood. But the performance in a in a performance, I drink the red liquid. You know the the medical red liquid when you get hurt. Beta. But it's fake. 
yeah, waistband. So then, with my really red lips, I kiss that specific part. So the invisible wound has become emphasized after the kiss in the performance situation. Yeah. So it was also an interesting um, contrast. Contrast. Yeah. River, did you uh, because hearing your uh, idea of connection between the, the artist and the audience it makes me think of uh, Tino's piece, The Kiss, where obviously the, the two performers are replaying famous pieces of art history, yeah. but then they would stay together in a uh, intimate or small world with no connection with the audience. Did you did you? Constructs the piece uh, regarding Tino's work, or is oh, it just a no, no, totally different? No, no, no. Um, well, the, the the inspiration of this particular performance was uh, because I, at that time, in in 2014, I was just had a breakup with my boyfriend, <laughs> <laughs> so I was wanted to do something to heal myself. Or I just want to play something, to play with like uh, something with the idea of if I can kiss the audience. <laughs> so that was different, <laughs> not related to uh, Tino Sina's work. <laughs> But now in uh, 2016, in, in the Encounter project, mm -hmm. uh, you are pushing further the reflection of, in, uh, about performance and exhibition, mm -hmm. about uh, Art doing, art making, and uh, the relationship to the audience. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us something mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what was Malanta mentioned was the the performative exhibition that I did in January this year in Taipei, Taipei Artist Village. <coughs> Sorry. And that place is called Encounter Project, the exhibition of our own. The our own means me, myself, and one audience member, which is a stranger. And I perform six hours per day and six days per week for one month during the exhibition hours. And each time, um, there is only one person who can come into the gallery room to meet me or let me to meet him or her. And And there is no third pers person in the space, and the space is just totally empty. So the gallery room was uh, a first try to do that, that without any tangible artwork, but only two person in persons in the empty space. And my intention is about time that I want to um, shape the the form of time and the form of performance related to the long durational discourse. So um, each person can come into the gallery room and I am just in the room. Maybe I'm standing or I'm sitting or I'm just lying down because maybe I can feel tired. And uh, the person just come in and we spend 20 minutes or more or less. But both of us don't know what will happen. So it's about how two strangers spend time and get to know each other, or not to get to know each other. And maybe that was a very extremely embarrassing situation, which I accept as well, because I didn't predict any specific interaction that I need to do or I have to do with the person. And the person also doesn't have any intention before and during his presence in the with me in the in the empty gallery room. Mm -hmm. So position can shift from the viewer with the viewer with the performer. Yeah, or... yeah. And basically, I was almost doing nothing in the performance. I mean, it's also the way that I want to try to do something related to nothingness, related to how we can try to say perform. Performance is some a way of performing nothing, and performing nothing itself is the performance. So, for example, I didn't create any situation like 
constructive, yeah, constructive situation. I didn't, I didn't create that I'm uh, some character, I'm, I'm uh, a funny person or I'm an evil person, no. I'm just very neutral in the space. And when we have the first sight at each other, then we just wait what will happen. This, I cannot help but think of uh, the, this idea of being present you, you mentioned as like Marina Abramovic in a way, was she a kind of uh, influence for you? Uh, if, I, if I really want to say there's an artist influence my work, I would say Shed the Chin. Yeah, the Taiwanese performance artist but based in New York. Yeah, uh, because Shed the Chin um, his practice is about really about time and life. He had the one year performance project with three different versions. Uh, one of the versions, which is also famous, is uh, uh, it's called Rope. He was roping her, himself with another female artist for one year. And they just do, because that the work was in 70s or 80s, and it was all documented by photography. Yeah, and this kind of long directional and ritualistic practice has influenced me that I would say that's pretty true. So, but the idea of the encounter project, uh, I, I agree that people would really easily relate it to what Marina Vovich, the artist, present work. But I think there is a difference, at least, is about the relationship between the viewer and the receiver. Because uh, Marina Abramovich's work in MoMA was she sitting with and confronting a person that they exchange a gaze. At the same time, uh, I mean, at, among the audience. Yeah. She's corny. She's yeah, yeah. But, but, my work in Taipei Artist Village, the encounter project, is more, for me, it's more about maybe we can say dealing the form of one on one performance and the issue of intimacy. Yeah. The authority question. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and to maybe to get back to uh, 20 minutes for uh, uh, the 20th century about Asia, um, it would be also interesting and this practices that are um, looking to, to the Asian history, Asian embodied history, but also uh, European and American uh, contemporary art. Um, and it's interesting to talk about also about the practice as uh, here in Europe as a curator, independent curator, as a researcher, and uh, you as a uh, as Anya uh, uh, said in the beginning of the talk, um, you, you also are so active on uh, bringing to Asia some of the choreographers important here in Europe. So, how this, uh, how you see yourself in this field and yeah. in this circulation? Yeah. Um, the, the, well, because I, um, if I can talk about the local situation in Taiwan, where I'm from, the, um, there's many scope that need to be challenged nowadays in the field of contemporary art and the field of performance in Taiwan. And I'm always not very satisfied with something conventional or something, something um, consultative. So my intention uh, has been more try to um, do something experimental, if we say. And so, uh, I just I just literally moved to Paris um, since this April, and uh, so um, to carry a, a a job title as an independent curator, and now actually I'm working with Taipei Fair Museum and Taipei Performing Arts Center. Um, I just want to do something interesting in terms of international collaboration or exchange. And, and for example, this March, I just presented Bobby Shama's work in Taipei Fair Museum for the first time in Taiwan. And 
I found it was very interesting feedback and echo from the audience about the people see um, this kind of form or and how this form can can bring us to a further discussion between you know of the relationship between dance and art and the, the sphere of the public and the museum and the theatre and how we can reconsider and rethink about the, the, the form of contem <coughs> contemporary dance. Yeah. So so now my curatorial project is more related to um, some practice related in between dance or contemporary art. Uh, because before my, my curatorial project is more about theater festival in Taiwan. Yeah. But now it's more bound to the visual art characters. Maybe we can open the questions to uh, the audience. Would anyone like to um, ask anything to River or make any comment or no? Okay. Well, um, well, thank you, River. I think we got a more nuanced understanding of your practice, and we will be um, looking forward to knowing more about your upcoming projects here and in Asia. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Smarina says, for your conversation. Um, thank you, everyone. And thank you. We wish you a, a pleasant uh, weekend. <laughs>